Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 2nd of April. 13 militants killed in multiple operations in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Mortal remains of 38 Indians killed in Iraq by ISIS brought to India. And Afghanistan sets October date for much-delayed elections. And now for all the details. In one of the biggest anti-terror operations in recent years in India's Jammu and Kashmir province, 13 terrorists were killed, confirmed a police official on Monday. There were three separate anti-terror operations launched in Shopia and Anantanag districts after a tip-off about presence of militants was received by the security forces. A total of 13 militants were gunned down as three separate encounters concluded in India's Jammu and Kashmir province confirmed a senior police official on Monday. Three soldiers of the Indian Army were also killed and several others injured as the encounters concluded in Shopia and Anantnag districts of the northern province on Sunday. The anti-terror operations were launched by the joint forces of Jammu and Kashmir police, the Indian Army and the paramilitary forces after they received a tip-off about presence of militants in Shopia and Anantnag. Kachi Dura mein jo tisra operation tha, wo kal raat ko conclude ho gaya. Us mein panch terrorists maare gaye hain aur dragad mein saath maare gaye hain aur Anantnag Dialgam mein so, uh, the anti-terror operation was one of the biggest in recent years in the province bordering Pakistan. India accuses Pakistan of training and arming militants and helping them infiltrate across the de facto border. Pakistan denies the allegations. Mortal remains of 38 Indians who were abducted and killed by Islamic State terrorists in Iraq were brought back to India on Monday. The Indian government retrieved the bodies of only 38 out of 39 of its citizens killed as one could not be identified completely. India's junior foreign minister V.K. Singh returned on Monday with the mortal remains of 38 Indians out of 39 who were abducted and killed by Islamic State terrorists in Iraq. The Indian government retrieved the bodies of only 38 out of 39 of its citizens killed as one could not be identified completely. The mortal remains of the one Indian will be sent later as the process of identification is still underway. DNA tests conducted had confirmed that samples of 38 people have matched. It's a, it's a sad day to bring uh, people back home in coffins. And uh, I'm sure it is not only Punjab, but the whole uh, country feels for them. And uh, we have uh, left no stone unturned. Singh had earlier assured that the deceased people will be treated as soldiers and the provincial governments will arrange for the mortal remains to be taken to their respective homes. The Indian government had maintained for years that it believed the men, mostly labourers who went to Middle East seeking work, were alive and it was trying to secure their release. Most of the workers were from the northern province of Punjab. Moving on, since the activist recently blamed Pakistan of carrying out atrocities on innocent Sindhi people. They said Pakistani forces operate with impunity in Sindh region and any attempt to highlight the situation is muzzled. Sindhi activists have accused Pakistan of carrying out atrocities on Sindhi people as political activists are routinely being targeted in the province. Speaking on the sidelines of the recent UNHRC session in Geneva, the Sindhi activists exposed Pakistan's oppressive policies in Sindh province, which contributes to 70% of the country's GDP. They blamed the Pakistani army and intelligence agencies for enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings of innocent people in Sindh. 
know that Sindh is the lifeline of Pakistan and Pakistan uh, is surviving on Sindh and that's why they are creating fear of atmosphere, atmosphere of fear uh, in Sindh because they are trying to develop CPEC project and because of that one there is huge uh, operation is going on against Sindhis mainly in Sindhi nationalists. The multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC project affects many parts of Pakistan including Sindh where people are demanding the intervention of international community to stop its construction. Locals allege China and Pakistan are aiming to change the demography of the region and have been committing atrocities against the innocent people. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan on Sunday announced that parliamentary and local district elections will be held on October 20th. The elections are considered a dry run for the presidential vote to be held in 2019 and a test of whether Afghanistan's Western-backed government can overcome past election problems of poor security and fraud. Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission or IEC on Sunday announced that parliamentary and local district elections will be held on October 20, more than three years behind schedule. The elections are considered a dry run for the presidential vote to be held in 2019 and a test of whether Afghanistan's Western-backed government can overcome past election problems of poor security and fraud. Announcing the date, IEC officials said that the voter registration process would start in mid-April. The current parliament's five-year term was to expire in June 2015, but Afghan President Ashraf Ghani extended it by decree amid security fears and disagreements on how to prevent fraud. Registering millions of voters in a system designed to avoid voter fraud presents a major logistical and security challenge given Taliban control over large areas of the country. But authorities say that security forces believe they can assure the election preparations go ahead. Moving on to news from Nepal, Sanghya Samajwadi Forum Nepal Chairman Upendra Yadav has praised the recent poll report by the European Union Election Observation Mission, which drew strong criticism by the government last month. The leader said it was very immature of the government to protest against the mission's report. Chairman of Sanghiya Samachwadi Forum, Nepal, or SSFN, Upendra Yadav has said the European Union Election Observation Mission, or EU, EOM, had given correct recommendations in its report. Speaking at a press meet on Sunday, Yadav praised the EU EOM report, saying the government decision to criticize the report was an immature move. Yadav's remark on EU's report came after Premier K.P. Oli Sharma criticized the mission's report last month and said the mission had undermined Nepal's sovereignty and an overwhelming voter participation in its report. The EU mission's recommendation for denying the proportional representation election quota for some complain about non-representation of Christians and command on the election commission's opacity in their report through strong criticism from both the government and the pool body. The EU EOM, which was launched in Nepal to observe the pool process across the country, submitted its final report to the pool body last month. An aircraft of the Indian Navy TU-142M has been turned into a museum after being decommissioned in India's southern Vishakhapatnam city. The aircraft served in the Indian Navy for 29 years. Indian Navy's TU-142M aircraft that has been turned into a museum after being decommissioned in 2017 has been attracting visitors in India's southern Vishakhapatnam city. The aircraft, which has been placed at a sea beach in the city, has various equipments and parts of aircraft like propeller, engine, survival kit, anti-submarine missile and data recorder. Excited visitors who were present in huge numbers were seen enjoying the experience and clicking pictures. The U-142M aircraft is, initially we brought it from Russia in 1988. After serving of 29 years in Indian Navy, 
and recent past in 2017 march and april is uh, uh, retired from you can say that uh, decommissioned from indian navy and we make this aircraft as a museum for people public and kept it uh, it was a very nice experience we got to know about the air force and all the technical things that we visited here and uh, it was my first time experience to visit an air force aircraft uh, uh, that is 142 mu and uh, we got to know many things about the air force and about the plane systems how they work and how they fight in the wars also how they destroy the submarines underneath and all the things we got to know it was a very nice experience the now decommissioned aircraft was initially brought from russia in 1988 after serving of 29 years in indian navy a trader in india's southern tamil nadu province is selling dyed baby chicks to be kept as pets the leghorns are attracting youth and kids due to their colorful feathers a seller in coimbatore city of india's southern tamil nadu province is conducting the trade of artificially colored chicks across the region to be kept as pets by families Around 6000 lakh horn chicks are sold each month by the seller who buys them in bulk before dyeing them in different colors and carrying them in baskets across the region. வந்து தர்மபுரில இருந்து நான் கோணிஞ்சி கொண்டு வரங்க கோயம்புத்தூர் கொண்டு வந்தங்க அங்க அந்த பைக்கிலே கொண்டு வருவேன். இங்க வந்து நான் கலர் அடிச்சி ஊர் ஊரா யாவர் பண்ணுவங்க. கோலிஞ்சி வந்து கலர் அடிச்சதனால கலர் அடிக்கலாம் குழந்தைகள் எல்லாம் விரும்பி வாங்குவாங்க. அப்புறம் விரும்பி வாங்குவாங்க இந்த கோலிஞ்சி விலை யார எல்லாம் அழிஞ்சிட்டு போகுதுங்க. ஆனா கோலிஞ்சி நல்ல நல்ல வெரைட்டிங்க. நல்ல நாட்டுக்கோழி மாதிரி வந்து நல்ல ஒரு ஒரு எல்தான கோழி அது யாருக்கு தெரிய மாட்டேங்குதுங்க சன்டன் கிளைம்ஸ் தி கலர்ஸ் யூஸ் ஆர் நாட் ஹார்ம்ஃபுல் அண்ட் ஹேவ் பீன் ஸ்பெஷலி manufactured for this purpose though the chicks lost the colors went to fatter crew they still provide a good business due to their popularity amongst children as they domesticate them due to their attractive color A 3-day fashion week in India's showbiz capital Mumbai city concluded on Sunday with some traditional Indian attires ruling the ramp. Models walked the ramp showcasing the collections which were all about detailed Indian designer dresses in shades of peace. Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. 13 militants killed in multiple operations in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Mortal remains of 38 Indians killed in Iraq by ISIS brought to India. And Afghanistan sets October date for much delayed elections. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.